Hello everyone, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over the BenQ EX3210R, otherwise known as their Dying Light 2 Stay Human Special Edition Monitor, which more or less has some Dying Light aspects to the external design, and a couple of things that would help you out a little bit in game, and we're gonna talk about those things in a bit here. Overall, this thing is just a really nice package for the price range, and this one is not using an IPS panel like some of the previous Mobius monitors. This one is actually using a VA panel which is pretty interesting and in my opinion puts it in square competition with the Samsung Odyssey G7. And we're going to talk about all those things in this review but do want to let you guys know that this monitor was provided by BenQ for review. The monitor as well as the game code for Dying Light 2 Stay Human and if you do end up purchasing this monitor it is around $600. Currently I see it on sale for $550 on BenQ's site but you do actually get the game for free so you just got to make sure that you follow the directions at the bottom of the site. I'll put it on screen right now so if you are interested in picking up this monitor just know that you do get dying light 2 for free again this video is not sponsored but just want to let you guys know at the beginning if you are interested in picking up this monitor or playing the game start off with the specs of this display it is a 32 inch 1440p display with 165 hertz refresh rate you do have emulated hdr with benq's hdr i ai processing and software that goes on with the display now it is a va panel not an ips panel like a lot of the other previous mobius monitors that i reviewed on the channel and also that they have on their website. It's actually a pretty decent VA panel, but we'll get into the specifics of that in just a bit. But it is also steeply curved at 1000R, which is another reason why it squarely competes against the Odyssey G7. You do also have display HDR4 Hunter compatibility as well as AMD FreeSync Premium Pro. And one quick thing about that, I did try to use this with my NVIDIA GPU and enable G-Sync compatibility, and it was not a good experience. So I don't recommend enabling G-Sync compatibility compatibility when you're going to use this monitor. I just got some really weird input lag and the occasional stutter and something just seemed off, but I disabled the G-Sync and everything started working just fine. Talking about the exterior design, you do have a massive stand, so you will have to make sure that you have a pretty huge desk if you're gonna wanna use this thing on a desk. Otherwise, you're gonna wanna look at using a monitor arm, and I will leave a link to one heavy-duty monitor arm that I use in the description below so you guys can have a really good experience with a 32-inch monitor. And it also comes with a couple of USBs, so it's a pretty nice desk mount. It's a little expensive, but it does work really well, and I actually used it to hold up the 4K version of this monitor that is a flat IPS 4K display and it's been like that for the past couple of months so it is a really good monitor arm. Now if you are interested in using the stand itself you do have some dying light accents on both of the feet and the stand is height and tilt adjustable but there is no pivot functionality so you won't be able to swivel this monitor to use it in a vertical orientation but in my opinion it's not really that big of a deal because this is probably going to be in the center of attention when it comes to your setup so not really a big deal that you can't use it vertically. On the back is all silver and you do have a graphic of one of the characters from Dying Light 2, which I believe his name is Aiden. You just got a graphic on one of the small panels on the back of the monitor, and it looks okay. I mean, it's pretty decent. It's on the back though, so you're never really gonna see it. But again, if you wanna get the game for free, then that's the one reason that I would buy this particular monitor. As far as the ports and inputs go, you have two HDMI 2.1 connections, a DisplayPort 1.1, a headphone jack, as well as two USB 3.1 ports. And then getting around the monitor, you have your navigation nipple at the bottom, as well as the power button, but you don't have to use those to use this monitor. It actually comes included with a remote and that's really nice because you can just use the remote to go through all the on-screen display settings and that is one of the best things about a lot of these Mobius monitors is that you typically get the remote, especially if you get one of the higher end monitors like this one. And that remote works great with the Travolo audio system that comes with two speakers as well as one woofer and the audio quality that comes from it is actually pretty decent as well. Here's a quick sound test of the different audio modes so you guys can see or hear exactly what I'm talking about but this cell cat here we don't know as far as i've looked around and i've researched not crack it open then we will talk about the game one of my favorite disc arts ever all oh, all the art all the concepts this 
was next gen game dialogue breakdowns of where the tech's going to be what your choice is going to be advancing level company store here promoting jedi knight jedi outcast indiana jones and the in my opinion there's only a couple of good audio modes the fps one is basically just enhances a lot of those higher end audio cues so you can hear footsteps and gunfire and directional sound and things like that but my favorite audio profile is that pop slash live audio profile that one is just the most balanced and the one that i can use for just about everything gaming media consumption listening to music is just the one that sounds the best. I don't really have to worry about changing the different audio modes all the time. As far as the color reproduction is concerned on this VA display, I found that the best mode out of the box is going to be that RPG mode with the light tuner set to zero. That gave me the result of 100% sRGB coverage, 84% Adobe RGB, as well as 89% of the P3 color gamut. But when I swapped it over to the sRGB mode, the uh, store was definitely not as pretty. So the sRGB rating dropped down to 94%, 69% of Adobe RGB, and 69% of DCI-P3, which honestly speaking, you really can't trust at all. So I do recommend that if you are going to use this monitor for color sensitive work, definitely use the RPG mode. But um, with that being said, I don't necessarily think that I would trust this monitor with any intensive creative work because the colors are decent. They're not as good as something like the Odyssey G7. I definitely noticed that with that um, quantum dot display they had, the color reproduction was a little bit better and I was able to trust it. Even with things like content creation and photo editing and stuff like that because it was just very consistent with what I edited compared to when I posted it online, checked it on my phone, checked it on my laptop, watched it on TV, whatever. I just noticed that the images and video when I was editing on that monitor was a lot more consistent than it is when I edit it and review it on this monitor. When it comes to the blur performance of this monitor, I definitely noticed that AMA 0 and 1 was just a little bit too slow when it came to the input. I noticed a lot of smearing. It just was not really that great of an experience. But when you boost the AMA all the way up to level 3, you're going to notice a ton of overshoot. And that really was not my favorite thing to do. So if I did not have the blur reduction mode on, which is pretty rare because there's a lot of smearing going on with this thing when it comes to having a VA panel. I definitely would give the edge to the Odyssey G7 as far as clarity goes, but if I'm going to use it without the blur reduction mode on, I'm going to use it with the AMA2 setting, which is going to give me some pretty decent input lag, and I'm not really going to have to worry about the speed of the panel because it does feel pretty quick and snappy, but just the blur is just a little out of control. Now, when you enable the blur reduction mode on AMA1, it is perfectly fine as far as the input lag goes and the motion clarity in it is definitely the way to use this monitor if you're gonna use it for gaming. If you're browsing and things like that, obviously you can use whatever you want because it doesn't really matter. But when it comes to gaming and the motion that you're gonna be seeing on screen, if you use AMA3, especially with the blur reduction mode on, it is just a blurry mess when it comes to all the coronas that you're gonna see and all the overshoot. Like it's really just not worth using at all. AMA1 is definitely the most balanced when it comes to the speed and the clarity, but everything else, honestly speaking, is just not good. And again, using it without the blur reduction mode on really wasn't that great. So my best experience using this monitor was not when I was filming B-roll. Filming B-roll was honestly really hard because using it without the blur reduction mode on is a chore to say the least. Right now we're gonna take a quick look at some of the color modes and some of these settings like the black equalizer, which does work pretty well at bringing out a lot of those shadows, but I honestly prefer to use the RPG mode with the color vibrance setting set to 10 or maybe as high as 14. And then also using that light tuner that BenQ gives you that either lets you increase the immersion level of the game by making a lot of the shadows extremely dark. And since it's a VA panel, you do get some pretty inky blacks and it can be near OLED level in terms of the dark levels and things like that. But once you introduce some more light from the backlight, you can definitely see a lot of detail in those darker areas. Then BenQ also does give you that HDRI mode where you can simulate having, you know, local dimming and things like that and having a higher level of HDR, but really it just plays a lot with the color settings. But if I had to pick one of the HDR modes, I would definitely pick the game HDRI mode. But in terms of my favorite two modes to use, I would definitely say between the FPS and the RPG mode, I definitely enjoyed using the RPG mode the most because it just gave me a little bit more detail and a little bit better color reproduction than the FPS mode did. Now, in my opinion, would I buy this monitor for $600? Well, that is a pretty tricky question because it's a little bit of a unique product and BenQ is really good at doing this where they give you a decent monitor with okay performance 
and they also pack in those included speakers that do not sound bad. And if you're looking for a monitor just to add to your setup to have a really clean all-in-one display without having speakers on your desk, then this is a pretty good option in my opinion. But would I rather have this panel using that VA panel or would I rather use one of the BenQ Mobius IPS panels? Uh, that is a very easy choice. The Mobius IPS panels don't sustain their brightness as much when you turn on that blur reduction mode, but you can definitely get away with not using it at all if you really don't want to. Or with this monitor, you basically have zero choice to use the motion blur reduction mode or not. If you're playing anything seriously and you actually want to be able to see your targets if you're playing a first person shooter, or in the case of playing Dying Light, if you want to see the undead and you want to see your, you know, zones and area clearly you definitely want to have that ama set to one and also have that blur reduction mode enabled because without it it's going to be really hard to see you're going to be looking at a blurry mess and it just makes it a little bit hard for me to openly recommend this to everyone because using the panel it's fun to use and it's decent and it's moderately fast and it's very immersive for sure being a va panel having those deeper dark levels but unfortunately it's just the fact that it's just very, very blurry. And when I used the Samsung Odyssey G7, that was like my first experience using a higher end VA panel that had IPS like performance and a little bit better color reproduction as well. And the Odyssey G7 having some of the clearest motion blur performance that I've seen to date and directly comparing this one to that one, that one's running at 240 Hertz and it's really the same price as this one. If you go with the smaller 27 inch version, which I think is a better deal and probably the one that you should get because 1440 p at 32 inches after using this doesn't really look that great and i know i'm kind of spoiled at using 4k 32 inches for quite a while at this point 1440p is a lot better suited for 27 inch screens in my opinion but if you really want to get the 32 inch screen size samsung they offer the odyssey g7 in 32 inches as well so i just feel like that's just a much better deal when it comes to the clarity that you get the color reproduction accuracy that you get compared to this one this one Little bit of a hard sell. Don't really love the design. I don't really love the design of the Odyssey G7 either. I think it's ugly. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not that good. This one is a little bit cleaner than the Odyssey G7. Uh, if you're not talking about anything on the stand, if you mount it, it looks better than the Odyssey G7. And you also get those speakers that you don't get on the Odyssey G7 as well. So if you have speakers, I say probably buy the Odyssey G7. If you don't have speakers, I say probably go for this one. Use the blur reduction mode on as long as you're not sensitive to some light strobing because on camera, the blur reduction looks pretty bad, but in person, it's really not noticeable at all. At least it wasn't to me. Let's check out the blur reduction on real quick on camera. See, like it looks really, really bad right there, but on camera, I don't know why, but it's picking up every single strobe, probably just because, you know, shutter speed and sensors and all that good stuff. But in person, it does not look this bad. I'm looking at the screen right now and I don't notice any flickering at all. I'm just kind of having a tough time recommending this as a one trick pony, because if you're really sensitive to that strobing and you notice it every time, then this probably isn't gonna be a good enough monitor for you. But that's all I have for this video. If you guys enjoy, feel free to drop a like and subscribe to the channel as well. I wanna thank you guys again for watching. And again, huge shout out to Banky for sending this out as well as the code of Dying Light 2. Not really my type of game. Uh, it was okay to play, honestly speaking, but I really just went right back to playing my usual stuff like COD and Destiny 2. And recently I've been trying out a little bit of that Lego Star Wars, uh, the Skywalker saga and whatnot. It's a decent game, but the older Lego Star Wars games were way better and the levels were longer and a lot more detailed. This one, the levels, they're huge, um, but they're very short and it's not really what I'm looking for. This is just, uh, anyways, I digress. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video. You don't want to see me with a...